えー、皆さんおはようございます。聞こえておりますでしょうか。Good morning, everyone.、はいえー、あの本セクションを始めさせていただきたい,い。So I would like to begin today's session. 本セクションの共同だと。I am going to be a co-chair for this session from National Institute of Advanced Industrial Science and Technology. My name is Yasutaka. And the session deals with off-site decontamination and related waste management. This is an hour and a half session. So I will talk about the outline of this session. As you know, the, since the Fukushima Daiichi plant accident, the environmental restoration、uh, is being taken place and decon decontamination is being carried out. And for 1,300 square meters of land has been already carried out. And the contaminated soil has been carried out into an intermediate storage place. で最終処分が完了するということが、こうして決められているという状況でございます。あ、sorry、correction。so 1,300 cubic meters of soil has been carried into intermediate storage place。and now they're trying to carry out reducing the radioactive materials in the soil。and also reducing the volume of the soil。So, we're going to share the result of decontamination. In managing the、um, contaminated soil, there is also social aspects. This is Futaba town,、uh, interim storage place. And there is a still a home and some shrine and coast. These are historical places. So, history and memory. How should we deal with these areas? And we have to think of the future as well. In this session, we're going to talk about technical issues as well as social issues. And、uh, we hope that we can make this session about what we can do for the future. So, another Co chair,、um, Ms. Jacqueline Garnier, she will have a, a video presentation and then we go into the six、um, presentations. And this is not in the presentation, but there's a complementary presentation from Sweden and、uh, Belarus. And、uh, so on. We cannot、uh, introduce you to this during the session, but you can go on the website. You can see these posters as well as videos. And QA session.、Uh, unfortunately, we are not in the real session.、Uh, we may not have enough time for QA session. So, if you can enter your questions into Q and A section,、uh, presenter will respond to you in real time or later. So, let's look at Ms. Jacqueline's comments. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all of you around the world. My name is Jacqueline Garnier Laplace. I am currently working at the OECD Nuclear Energy Agency, where I have the privilege to serve as the scientific secretary of the Committee of Radiological Protection and Public Health, which is one of the standing technical committees of the agency. I'm also a member of the ICRP Committee 1 dedicated to radiation ethics. First of all, my sincere apologies for not being live with you today due to family reasons. It has been a real pleasure to co organize and today remotely co chair this session dedicated to off site decontamination and related waste management, 
with my dear colleague Tetsuo Yasutaka from the National Institute of Advanced Industrial Science and Technology. I will just introduce the session in order to make you familiar with the major topics that will be presented and discussed this morning. Nearly 10 years after the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant accident, the issue of off-site decontamination and related waste management is still central to the recovery and extremely complex both on the technical and societal sides. From past accidents like Chernobyl or Fukushima, we certainly learned that cleanup is accident site and local stakeholders specific. But whatever the circumstances or specificities are, the issue of environmental remediation and waste management is a prelude to the restoration and revival of affected areas, communities and residents. Making the decision-making process consensual by involving a wide range of stakeholders who can bring local knowledge and expertise is viewed as vital in order to achieve the best possible outcome. To understand better the future challenges associated to these lessons, we will listen to six invited speakers. Remediation process and necessary resources highly depends on radiological characterization, landscape, geographical features and use, but also largely need trust, understanding and cooperation from local residents. Our first speaker, Kawase-san, will explain how the decontamination model demonstration project helped to integrate such specificities by developing appropriate technologies and knowledge necessary for carrying out decontamination work in contaminated areas of various types. Obviously, to implement full-scale decontamination steadily and safely, all this technological knowledge had to be combined with decisions on various options and resources necessary to implement the choices. Ogawa-san will use statistics from the Radiation Dose Registry System for Environmental Decontamination Workers to evidence how huge was the effort in terms of decontamination workforce and how this workforce evolved over the years to transition from environmental decontamination to waste management and transportation to the interim storage facility. Then, Osako-san will pinpoint the difficult issues of waste treatment through the derivation of the cutoff levels to allocate waste to appropriate treatment and to define modalities for recycling low contamination soils to reduce the volume of waste to be eventually disposed. Inoue-san from Kriyapi will discuss about the public acceptance of these recycling options as well as setting the final storage site. Continuous learning from the Fukushima Daiichi accident highlights the absolute necessity of enhancing preparedness for post-accident recovery. Christopher Mogg on behalf of the CRPPH will describe the ongoing reflections for a generic framework for post-accident recovery where he will develop mainly the waste management issues. Last but not least, I would like to share the way I read Ohashi-san's testimony in the abstract book because I really believe this is an excellent take-home message to stimulate our personal and collective reflections on the vital importance of the human, societal, cultural and ethical dimensions of making the recovery process a bridge to what we could call a new normal situation designed according to the desired outcomes of the stakeholders.
はい、えー、ジャックリンさんありがとうございました。えー、それではあの招待講演の。Now, let's go on to the presentations. First presentation is from JAE, Mr. Kawase. Please, floor is yours. Presentation was pre recorded. So I am from JAEA and I belong to the Fukushima Research and Development Division. I'm going to talk about developing a holistic environmental restoration approach what worked, what didn't work. So demonstration of decontamination model, it is, it was conducted to show the uh, reduced effect of environmental con contamination from radiation to health and livelihood of people. The national government is going to carry out this project. So the national government commissioned JAEA to conduct a project to demonstrate the environmental restoration model. The project covered areas of high radiation over 20 millisieverts per year. And based on actual data such as decontamination meth using existing technology. So government requested large scale outdoor decontamination method in a limited period and safety securing method regarding the radiation protection for workers. I will talk about the outline of the model. So as I mentioned before, the project uh, is based on actual data and to reduce the radiation as soon as possible. So JAEA was commissioned to conduct this project. So mainly we demonstrated technology for effective decontamination for 11 cities and towns on Tamadori. And it began on November 2011 and finished in June 2012 and reported the results. As you can see, we have various areas with different radiation dose levels and also areas with various buildings and forests and so on. And this is the area that we, con we conducted the project. So planned evacuation area, 16 municipalities within that area. So 11 municipalities, as you can see, it has various infrastructures or forests. And as for the space, it's all together 209 hectares altogether. So our model was based on a multiple perspective. So we looked at the cost benefit to select the method and reducing the volume of the soil and uh, transportation, building infrastructure necessary to do the work, selecting access method and radiation um, protection and management for workers. And also in Fukushima, there's a lot of snow and uh, the surface tends to become frozen. So to deal with that and also a discussion with the residents. And also we had to conduct a prior monitoring survey before we embarked on decontamination. Based on that uh, prior survey, we um, estimated the amount of the soil to be removed. 
and also we made plans for the temporary、uh, storage place and radiation management. These are the examples of the prior monitoring survey. The surface of the road, where it's asphalt surface, we looked at the、uh, aerial dose. And road surface,、uh, the air dose is lower than other ground surface. And on highly dense surface, radioactive substance exists two to three meter, millimeters from the surface. On highly porous, Asphalt surface, radioactive substance exists up to five millimeters from the ground. So, selected on these results, we selected the decontamination methods. These are the decontamination methods employed. One is cutting method, using water drops and metal balls to shave off, scrape the surface. And also, we used road cleaning machinery. To remove surface soil. And also, we used civil engineering machineries to scrape off the surface. This is radioactive cesium on agricultural land. Vegetable fields plowed just before the nuclear accident had. Radioactive cesium p e r m e a t e deeper than fields that were not plowed. A variety of concentration was observed depending on the depth of the wheel track of tractors. General distribution on the left hand graph shows the cesium exists two to three centimeters deep down the ground, but on the right hand, you can see the ground is plowed and it exists up to 10 centimeters deep. Now, attachment of radioactive cesium on sports ground and parks. Most areas had about three to five centimeters、uh, deep from the surface some radioactive cesium. Other types of land had 90% of radioactive cesium 8 centimeters down from the surface. So, most we found that decontamination could be done by removing the surface soil. Methods appropriate for agricultural land. So, we used the civil engineering machineries to scrape off the surface and also. In low contaminated areas, we had employed mixing methods to mix surface contaminated soil with cleaner, deeper soil. By taking such methods, we don't have to remove so much soil. And methods for、um, decontaminating houses and buildings. We removed cesium laden deposits and by wiping roofs and windows using、uh, or washing roofs and walls using、um, water and high pressured water brush. However, some buildings may have been damaged by the earthquake this time, so we could not use water decontamination. Now, forests in livelihood zone. We collected fallen leaves and small twigs by hand and also by construction equipment. And in some cases, to collect leaves, we used vacuum. And also, We cut the twigs and brands,、uh, branches、uh, which were contaminated. Forest decontamination methods had to be changed depending on the condition of trees contaminated by radioactive substances. For evergreen trees, 
As you can see, upper part of the tree have large amount of radioactive substances, so we had to remove that. Broadleaf trees didn't have leaves out at the time of nuclear accident. So there's more radioactive substance on the leaf mold, so we removed the mold. The result of surface soil contamination, there was, this is Minamisoma, relatively low dose area. So with the, the dark blue shows decontaminated areas. The left hand shows before the decontamination, right hand after the decontamination. As you can see, the yellow area had turned to blue so we don't see yellow areas after decontamination. Now, this is relatively high dose area, Okuma town. As you can see on the left hand side, this is before the decontamination and right hand side shows after. And you can see red and orange were no longer seen and there is lower dose with yellow and green dots. So we demonstrated that those could be reduced by surface decontamination. Now, removal of soil storage on ground or underground. And we needed to demonstrate the storage method. As you can see on the top, this is on the ground storage and the below picture shows the underground storage. So we looked at the effect and the ease of work. So summary of the demonstration project. As you can see, the low dose areas, like less than 30 millisieveld per year, we could reduce the dose to less than 20 millisieveld per year. The intermediate areas like we could re reach up to 40 to 60% of uh, radioactive dose. Um, however, we could not attain 20 millisieverts per year. And in high dose areas, like um, in, for agriculture and residential area decontamination, we could reduce the radio uh, aerial dose to 70% level. However, we could not attain 50 millisievelt per year, it was higher. And the aerial dose rate uh, where it was low, we could reduce, uh, we, could, we could only reduce a little. So we will compile, we have compiled the results and we reported to the national government. So these are the knowledge obtained from our model demonstration. In order to reduce the aerial dose, we need to con conduct the work sufficiently, thoroughly and uniformly. And we need to find out the actual situation of contamination and decide on the methods. And to decide how much decontamination and what scope to conduct, that will affect the temporary storage. So we need to really study the method. And decontamination area is where the residents are. So we need communication between the residents and landowners to give timely information to the landowners and residents. And we are doing this in a wide area and there are going to be a lot of workers. So we need to conduct training and education to the workers beforehand. So we reported the results and the national government has carried out this work. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mr. Kawase. So you, before the, uh, you conducted this demonstration project, 
before the full-fledged demonstration went on. From 2013 to 2017, 2018, there was a full-fledged decontamination work. Thank you. Now we go on to uh, Mr. Ogawa, Radiation Effects Association. He'll talk about radiation dose of workers engaged in decontamination of environment. Uh, this is also a video. I am Ogawa from the Radiation Effects Association. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. I will be talking about radiation dose of workers engaged in the combination of the environment. The contents as is shown, first I'll be talking about the launch of centralized system for management of workers engaged in decontamination and other, other work follow, following the Great East Japan earthquake. Secondly, we will divide the work done in a special decontamination area into several categories and compile the radiation dose for each category. And thirdly, we made a comparison with workers engaged in nuclear power facilities. So I'll make a report on each of them respectively. As already mentioned, uh, we had a Fukushima Daiichi accident in March 2011. And following this accident in 2012, the government installed act on special measures concerning the handling of radioactive pollution and in this act uh, they divided the area in decontamination into two areas first is a special decontamination area which is a area that was substantially contaminated by radioactive substances from the accident and the government is to engage in the contamination in this area the other area is the intensive contamination survey area this area, the air dose rate is a 2.3 millisievert or more. And the prefectural governor or the mayor is responsible for planning decontamination work. And the decontamination rate of work continues today, mainly in the special decontamination area. In order to protect workers in a special decontamination area and intensive contamination survey area, the government in 2012 issued ordinance on prevention of ionized radiation hazard. However, there were some problems in implementing this ordinance. For example, workers moving from one operator to another, they, not, they did not report their post exposures accurately to the new operator. And also operators who terminated the business, they did not transfer their records to the designated institution. As a result, the records were lost. In order to solve these problems, REA, we had a centralized management system for workers in nuclear power facilities. So we uh, built a similar system for workers engaged in decontamination in November 2013, and this became operational in March 20, 2015. In this system, there are two kind of categories of work depending on the area. These categories are first, work in the special decontamination area, as well as handling of accident-related waste. And for this category, we issue a radiation passbook, uh, quarterly registration of radiation dose, and transfer of the record after the work is complete and also inquiry can be made into past exposures. And for the second category, this is for inten intensive contamination survey area. Uh, this requires transfer of records after the work is complete. And this is, shows how the registration is done using the system. The passbook issued by a designated institution gives a personal ID for each worker. And by using the ID, it, the both, this can be used both for recording exposure dose for decontamination as well as for nuclear power related work. The primary contractor first registers the names of the project as well as the quarterly exposure dose at the central registration database. They can also make inquiries into their employees' past exposure exposures. 
it is also possible to cross-reference the databases for decontamination and nuclear power work. As of November the 1st, 2020, about 120 primary contractors registered their date, date, uh, 750 projects involving decontamination or handling of accident-related waste. And 100,000 workers' the records have been registered. Uh, this the di uh, bar graph shows the statistics on the annual radiation exposures of the workers. Uh, this uses the personal ID. Therefore, it can tally exposures even if workers were involved in multiple projects in any given year. The bar graph shows the no number of workers. You can see that uh, from 2012 to 2015, it increased, and then it decreased to 2018, and then rose again in 2019. Uh, this is probably the effect of the termination of whole area decontamination in March 2017. The maximum dose, as you can see, the, the highest is 13.9 millisievert, and the lowest level is 6.7 millisievert. However, none of them, none of the workers went beyond 20 millisievert. As for the average dose, it is between 0.3 millisievert to 0.7 millisievert. The latest data on 2019 uh, it shows that 90% of workers exposures were less than one millisievert per year. This shows the age distribution of the workers. From 2012 to 2016, the highest percentage was in the age group 60 to 64. But from 2017, the high percentage was from the age group 55 to 59. Uh, based on the uh, project name registered in the database, we sorted them into categories based on the type of work and made statistics on exposure dose in each category. In March 2017, uh, when the whole area decontamination ended, other types of work continues. And based on the database, uh, looking at the project name registered, we divided the types of work into five categories and their exposure doses. The categories are as shown. The first one is decontamination. Second, waste disposal. Third, interim storage. Fourth, reconstruction and revitalization. And fifth, others. This shows the results of the contamination or exposure by work type. Workers engage in different types of work, and they are double counted for each type of work. Therefore, the total number of workers do not correspond to the previous graph. The blue is shown in decontamination. It rose up until 2015, but then decreased after that. This is probably because of the whole area decontamination that ended in March 2017. On the other hand, from 2015, uh, the interim storage in red, the number is, is increasing. And after 2017, the reconstruction in orange, the number of workers is increasing. As for interim storage, in 2015, it accounted only about 2% of all but in 2019, it accounts for about half of all the number of workers. Uh, this shows the collective dose for each category. Uh, we can see the same trend, the decontamination in blue. It in rose until 2015, but then decreases after that and interim storage in red, the number of workers increases after 2015 and also for the reconstruction after 2017. Uh, this shows the average dose for each category. 
in each year, uh, the work type is uh, divided into each category. For example, in example 2019, decontamination blue 0.1, waste management 0.1, I interim storage 0.3, reconstruction 0.4, and others 0.2. From 2012 to 2017, the uh, whole area of decontamination was in effect, and therefore decontamination in blue was high from between 0.5 and 0.7, but it declined, decreased after that. Instead, from 2015, as shown in the interim storage in red, it is between 0.3 and 0.5. Uh, this work also included uh, work in managed areas, as well as uh, decontamination area not subject to whole area decontamination, demolition, demolition of houses and land development at the sites. The reconstruction in yellow. Uh, in 2017, we have a record of 0.7 BDC, or very high level. And here, uh, this involved decontamination in the de difficult to return zone. The waste management in gray. Uh, compared with other types of work, the it's low level of uh, millisievert 0.2 millisievert. This is due to because the waste is under 100,000 becquerel per kilogram, and also some of the area is in intensive contamination survey area. As for the maximum dose, is the results are just shown. Uh, in 2012, we had a high level of 13.9 millisievert for decontamination. This is due to JAEA's decontamination model demonstration project. Uh, from 2012 to 2014, uh, decontamination in blue, uh, the, this was a cause of the uh, maximum dose. Whereas in, from 2015, the interim storage site in red is the cause of the maximum dose. Next, uh, we look at the comparison of workers decon for decontamination as opposed to workers in nuclear power facilities. Uh, the records are for the latest information taken from 2019 for both decontamination and nuclear workers. For number of workers, average dose, maximum dose, and collective dose, for all of these, the, 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 the exposure were lower for decontamination compared with nuclear workers. Uh, this shows the age distribution for each. For decontamination in blue, the highest was between 56 to 59. But for nuclear power stations, uh, the highest percentage was between age 45 to 49. Uh, this is my conclusion. Uh, radiation dose registry system started in November 2013 and became operational in March 2015. At the end of two March 2017, the whole area decontamination ended, but other types of work continued. Uh, for example, interim storage and reconstruction. A comparison of exposures of workers in comparison between decontamination and nuclear power plants, uh, the decontamination was lower for all the items. As for data provided on nuclear power workers, the registration center provides important data for management of exposure of decontamination workers, as in the case of the database used for nuclear power station workers. Our data show that uh, on the, over the long process of recovery, the types of works changed quite substantially over time. Uh, this type of registry is important in the uh, recovery phase. It is important that we have this kind of process in advance. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Ogawa. Thank you very much, Mr. Ogawa. And it was a very comprehensive presentation of the many stakeholders for removing the contaminants and also that the management of the waste. Next, we would like to move on to a presentation 
that the volume reduction technology and recycling process and social consequences, uh, Mr. Osako, from the needs. The floor is, is yours. It's a pre-recorded re lecture. And just one point, when you pose the question, please identify who your question is directed to, because not all the participants are participating today. So, Secretariat, are you ready with our video? Good morning. My name is Osako. I'm from the Center for the Material Cycles and the Waste Management Research of Nice. I would like to discuss the contaminated soil and waste management technology and their future challenges for the final disposal. I would, look, I would like to look back at 10 years after the accident and what have been our measures taken for the soil and waste management and what will be the future challenges of the final disposal. I would like to concentrate more of us on the technological side of it. So far, that the area of decontaminated that for rehabilitation the environment was a two pillars and based upon the act of special act on the special measures so that decontamination and waste management these are two pillars for the measures of contaminated source and decontamination that the special decontamination areas the implementation by the responsibility of the national government and intensive contaminated survey areas and implementation by municipalities under the final financial support by national government was conducted. Now looking, turning our eyes to the measures to contaminated waste management, number one, that the specified waste, the so waste within the countermeasures areas, the designated waste, 8,000 or more becquerel per kilogram. So it was again that the national government's responsibility. And the others on the that 8,000 becquerel, less contaminated, implementation by the municipalities and industrial sectors. Industrial sectors means that the business order's responsibility they have to dispose of. Now for the specific techniques used for the decontamination, this is a decontamination of the houses, removing the deposit from the roof, deck, and gutters. As you can see, this is a manual labor. This was the schoolyards, gardens, and parks using the heavy construction equipment and also the forests and the woods. Please look at them. These are not the high tech technology at all. You would call these are the, the manual labor or even menial labor. Next, I would like to touch upon the tree diagram in the Fukushima prefecture that the flu of the decontamination waste and soil. This is a very basic and high level schematics. You move the soil on the left hand side, the temporary storage site, you move to the or storage site in the flexible container. And then they gradually move to the interim storage facility for the storage. Less than 8,000 becquerel, less contaminated soil, that encouraged to recycle for the reuse. On the other hand, the contamination weight, first that temporarily, temporarily storage site, and then that incineration facility, it is incinerated. This is reducing the volume. And after the incineration, the cesium is concentrated in the ash, but less than 100 becquerel and designated land uh, is disposed on the designated waste landfill and over 100 and then they are returned to the interim storage facilities for further reduction of the volume is attempted. Within the Fukushima that are currently progressing of the state of the in Fukushima, this is a progress report that the work was completed by early 2018, except the hard to return area. As a result, 13 million cubic meters is a huge amount of the soil was generated to be removed. And after the temporary storage site, but actually they are moved very smoothly into the interim storage facilities. 
and in fiscal 2021 we will move all of them to the interim storage facilities now removing of the, the contaminants from the soil and then that we will start the recycled soil be reclaimed into the soil and uh, for that incineratable waste that uh, we have the incineration that the plant is completed it is uh, the uh, process is very smooth and also that the interim storage facility uh, reduction volume operation already started. Next, I'd like to introduce to you that there were the flow of the, the, the process of the waste management. I would like to show you the, the actual picture of this. And this is a photo of the temporary storage site of soil and waste. And please look at the cross section of this. At the bottom, the sheet and the containers are piled up on this. Of the, and then that the soil is covered and on top of this and the impermeable sheet is covered for preventing the rainwater to get into the the water is collected in the tank and after checking the radio dosage and then released to the environment and this is a very large scale the temporary storage site you can see that the flexible containers is powdered in a huge mountain shape now that uh, most of them are, or that the significant amount is removed and to the interim storage, and well, the 60% uh, of that 1,000 used to be the, the temporary storage site is now, well, finished the operation. The, this is a photo of the contaminated soil using that uh, soil and waste that moving from the temporary storage to the interim storage using that the dump truck trucks and also that the digging out the, the containers are all real time uh, traced that are followed for traceability. And this is a temporary incineration plant for the decontamination waste. Thanks to the high technology that uh, radioactive waste is controlled. For example, cesium in the ash be collected 90.9% or more that recovered in the back filter. So this is a very safe operation, safe ash afterwards. Next is at the current situation of the designated waste management in Fukushima. And after the ash is produced in the incineration, less than uh, that uh, between the 8,000 to 10,000 becquerel that this designated um, landfill accept this. And then the ash is, or the cement solidification facility, which is standing nearby. Well, this is a pre-management before that storing to this designated land. This is a layout plan of the interim storage facility, ISF. Right up uh, 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 16, a square kilometers is secured around the, the Daiichi NPP, that the sorting out and storage and most of the, the related construction sites are finished. And this gives you that the flow of the interim facility and also the structure of the soil storage facilities that the, from the left to right, and this is uh, the container back breaker and the sourcing machine, and then that's the sorting out depending on the level level of the radioactive dose. So these are the main elements. In the soil storage facilities, you can see that the impermeable sheet is uh, stored underground, and then that the water is gathered and treated and released to that env environment. These pictures shows you that the soil storage facilities in ISF on the left-hand side, you can see this is a sorted, the belt compare that um, a very long distance of the time that the soil sorted out is conveyed here. Now I'd like to introduce to you, these are the interim, the storage facilities right now that I would like to move to the, the future challenges. As I have already mentioned that the storage and soil the soil and the waste, the manage has been very smoothly progressing, halfly. And many of the related construction sites are constructed um, around the interim storage site. So we are at the white line, dotted line, 
of the flow chart. We have come this far. Having said so, however, that the lying down, these are the future. There are many challenges that we have to tie over into the future. <coughs> the assumption is a target. That is, after the interim storage, the final uh, disposal, and by 2045, that we have to do the final uh, proposal, uh, disposal uh, outside of Fukushima. And uh, therefore, that, uh, that uh, huge amount of the soil and the waste have to be reduced in their volume. That is a prerequisite. So that we have to concentrate cesium and have to reduce the volume of the soil and waste. And also that the low contaminated soil and the waste are be removed out of this and positively use them, reuse them for the other purposes. So for the final disposal, for the future, but these are that the technological development that we are promoting right now for the future. These are the low level concentration. This is probably used as uh, the bank embankment, civil construction. And uh, we check no impact on the environment and uh, we can reuse that uh, low contaminated uh, the soil for the civil construction we have already confirmed. And these are that the classification washing treatment of the contaminated soil. Again, we are in the process of uh, developing and uh, the uh, radioactive, that the material be absorbed in the fine grains so that the wall washing are removing that the contaminated and uh, we try to extract the, the large side grains of the soil and recycle. This is the idea of this. And the pilot uh, examination told a pilot plant show proved that uh, we can extract indeed that the larger grain soils. Uh, this is a recycling operation e Tata village. And the low contaminated soil is used as uh, the foundation of the farming. And it is used for uh, the so-called energy plants or the horticulture. And this is the application of a high temperature melting technology of the relatively highly contaminated soil and waste. And this is also for reducing the volume. And there are two technology already on the practical use. And also the Futabamachi says that the construction site and high temperature and calcium chloride addition turned out to be very effective and you can significantly reduce that uh, radioactive level. And the slug, that the final product is slug, is very effective for the construction material. But how about the evaporated, that evaporated elements that we have to recover as a fly ash, that which contains the cesium, this will be the, the future challenge. So not into the future, so we further have to develop the, the further technology of the further reduction of volume and that phi ash cesium uh, exists in the format of the salt and so that uh, absorption and concentration that the ferrosilicide and silicon uh, titanate uh, should be reclaimed and stabilized and and under the final disposal, we are trying many different combinations of the technology. This has been our hard work. Ten years after the accident of the nuclear plant and also our remaining technical challenges for the future of the ultimate disposal. But finally, but not the least, apart from the technical challenges, the most important challenge exists in terms of the social acceptance regarding the locations of the final disposal sites and the use of the recycled materials is indeed very important. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Osaka, for your presentation. Yes, indeed, that you are in the middle on the front line of the technological development of recycling and what are the important elements of that uh, well, constructing the, the final disposal site outside of the uh, prefecture, that the social element is very important. Those are the challenges that all we have to face with. 
So we would like to move on to the next presentation. Professor Inoue, please. パワーポイント見れて見えております。見えますでしょうか。はい、スライドショーにしてあければ大丈夫だと思います。はい。はい、では大丈夫です今日始めさせていただきます。あの皆さん。So I will begin. I made my slides in English, so I will present in English. なんで、I'm serving as the research advisor to CREAP. And as a division head of the Fukushima Prefectural Center for Environmental Creation. So, this time I will present on the environmental remediation is in Fukushima and challenging issues, including public perception. So, this view graph shows the areas contaminated by the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant accident that affected hundreds of thousands of residents. The remediation of the whole area completely completed until March 19, 2018, except the difficult return zone close to the nuclear power plant. But more than 20,000 residents are still forced evacuation. So I will skip details of this biograph because another specialist already presented, I believe. <clears throat> so this biograph shows the Excuse me. Oh, this, this view graph shows the, each municipality with a difficult to return zone set up the special zone for reconstruction and revitalization for early reconstruction where the remediation steady progress. Maybe you can see from this figure the remediation steadily progressed. So, this biograph shows how residents confused on the rate and remediation target due to no knowledge on radioactive material and radiation before the accident. At the yesterday's pre presentation, the former mayor in Itate, Mr. Kanno, reported、uh, opinions of science spread over 180 degrees. So, Japanese government at that time announced to achieve one millisievert as annual dose as a long term goal for additional exposure dose corresponding to 0.23 microsievert per hour. So, this number makes residents a magic number to achieve. On the other hand, evacuation order lifted at the special decontamination area by the fact that estimated. The Annual dose is sure to achieve less than 20 millisievert per year. Thus, a couple of number of exposure doses makes confusion for residents. And the residents require to important,、uh, further, implement further remediation to lower、um, air dose, including forest, and etc. So, coming to this slide, the IAEA safety standard naming the remediation strategy and the process for a r e a affected by the past activities and event that I involved to draft this report. So, describe that the remediation range of reference or, or a recommended range of reference, reference for exist, existing exposure. Situation is 1 to 20 millisievert. The reference level is the starting point for optimization of protection and safety through,、uh, through remediation. The reference level should be used as boundary condition for optimization of protection and safety to define the range of remedial options and should be selected in the consideration of possible benefit and possible detriment. Stakeholders should be, of course, involved in early process. Discussion at the drafting meeting, as I remember, is difficult to define a certain number of reference levels between 1 to 20 millisievert. Even if the certain number, of, certain number is defined, no clear evidence can be provided on why that number is identified. 
So this、uh, biograph is concerning the dose reduction by remediation from the standpoint of residents. Those limit, standard, those limit standards are difficult to understand for public. A large number of information based on the scientific area, air base, especially in relation to dose rate, has been provided that helps for、um, decision making process. And the importance of foster, foster confidence of public. On the other hand, residents as well as municipality require forest remediation to reduce a, a radiation dose. But Satoyama model project suggests no effective reduction of the dose implemented in the special zone for reconstruction and revitalization. The NRA suggests. To use the individual personal dose rather than, rather than estimate dose in order to know real exposure dose. So, scientific data indicate the real exposure dose lower two thirds to a half compared with the estimate dose from the air dose. The next,、uh, this biograph is on the contaminated soil and waste arising from remediation. This figure shows the estimated volume of soil and waste. And transported to interim storage facility located close to the nuclear power plant. It reached to about 14 million cubic meters as of November 2019. Thus, soil d o m i n a t e about 90% of among them, and others like ashes with mostly high radioactivity level. And radioactivity of 77% of the soil is less than 8,000 becquerel per kilogram. That is corresponding to the radioactivity allowed to dispose disposal in general landfill disposal facility implemented before the accident. The MOE promised the residents in Fukushima that contaminated material are transported outside Fukushima Prefecture for、uh, disposal within 30 years. Therefore, management of contaminated material must be a crucial issue for further treatment. So, this biograph shows the,、uh, this biograph indicates issues required for the management of con、uh, contaminated material. The most important issue to be aware of is safety operation of the facility without release of radioactivity to the environment. Under this basic、um, principle, a couple of options should be explored. One is to minimize the volume of disposal of the final disposal site outside Fukushima Prefecture. Incineration of organic materials such as trees and waste from、um, demolition of houses, etc., is a potential option. However, ashes from incinerators, especially fly ash, has a remarkably High concentration of radioactivity due to concentration of radioactivity. The treatment of ashes should be stored not to release by stabilization. The classification of contaminated soil after removing rubber should be implemented to divide into low and high, low and high concentration of radioactivity with a purpose or a target to achieve for recycle and reuse. On the other hand, incomplete classification without consideration of decontamination factor will be a waste of resources. Of course, I have to emphasize to make effort to obtain public perception in every process. This biograph shows each process of contaminated soil for recycle and reuse. The soil will be used for Uh, core materials construction of roads and banks, and for reconstruction of area damaged by extremely、uh, crucial weather.、Uh, that, that is my private opinion. Moreover, the Minister of Environment is promoting the model project for agricultural use as base, as base soil in Itate village. The detail of these issues is skipped because of already reported by Dr. Osako. Then, this biograph shows what I learned in the relationship and dialogue with residents in Fukushima. The frame of mind of residents at early stage after the accident is that 
the accident is not our fault and not our responsibility and brought us incredible disaster. It is our natural request to recover it as it was. You said that the accident could never happen. We believed it, but we were betrayed. Regarding, regarding radiation, no knowledge we have, and nothing interest for us up to now. Regarding remediation and contamin contaminated wa waste, we do, not, we do not know what to do and how to treat. Residents conceived of distrust against natural, national government and TEPCO. It is essential to communicate with residents on this standpoint. The next slide. Most of people, such as risk communicator, say that it is important to have a dialogue with residents. Yes, of course. But what we should follow before the dialogue is to have enough understanding of real situation and to know residents' view and condition they are facing, such as what is concerned for residents, what is problem, what is necessary, and what is required. Briefing on how to implement remediation and how to treat waste is not the first stage. Accordingly, we have to know that dialogue doesn't work without knowledge of local situation and state of mind of residents. Next slide, I will talk on that sharing information and sense of worth with society are essential for remediation, reconstruction, and, de uh, and, de and the decommissioning of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant as well. What are residents worried about is current and future situation of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant and the concern of the further release of um, radioactivity and the safety and sense of secure provided by provided for us. In order to build a sense of um, trust, sharing information and sense of trust with society, it is required not to tell, but to be understood. Understood. I believe that the establishment of panel for dialogue, which is continuously working, is an option by participating representative of community, volunteer, government staff, and operator, and specialist. The next slide shows current distribution of evacuees and returnee with age dependence by serving residents' intention for return. So it is serious um, subject that the number of the residents who already returned or are planning to return is so small. Even for senior person, about 20% of residents have returned or will return but a quite small number for younger generation. These facts indicate reconstruction of community and municipality is facing a crucial situation. So as a final uh, view graph, I summarize my presentation with lesson and learned. Wide range of remediation in contaminated area was completed except high uh, contaminated area and the evacuation order were lifted by the achieving less than 20 millisieverts. However, residents require further reduction of the dose. A couple of number of exposure dose makes residents confusion, but it is difficult to identify a target number of remediation between one to 20 millisieverts. Remarkable um, amount of contaminated soil and waste on which management, including recycle and reuse, should be strategically considered. So dialogue with public is absolutely essential to build a sense of trust and to share information, and then achieve to share a sense of worth with society. So that is not to tell, but to be understand. So now, so, thank you for uh, your kind attention. Thank you for your presentation, Inoue-sen, Dr. Inoue. Uh, 
ちょっとプレゼンテーションの共有を聞いていただいても大丈夫でしょうか。はい、はいありがとうございました。えっと、ね、井上先生の方からえっと全体のお話をさらにえっと。So, Professor Inoue talked about the overall situation and in communicating with the residents, not to tell but to understand them is important. This has been pointed out by I think、um, Mr. Kawase and I think Mr. Ogawa and so on. That must be shared by the researchers. Now, moving on to the next presentation, and this is、um, the environmental remediation and radioactive waste management, the views of NEA from EA UK, Chris Mogg. Let me supplement this NEA.、Uh, It's a nuclear energy agency within OECD. So, so there is a special group on remediation. So she's, go, she's going to talk about that. This、uh, video has been pre recorded. Hi, everyone. Thank you very much for giving me this yes, opportunity、I'm... to share some thoughts on the work we've been doing for the NEA's expert group on recovery management. My name's Chris Mogg, and I currently work for the Environment Agency, who are co regulators of the nuclear industry in England. Alongside my role on the EGRM, I also head up a project within the UK to review and improve our arrangements for managing radioactive waste in emergencies.、Um, before I start, I'd just like to extend my thanks to Anne Nisbet from Public Health England. And also, colleagues from the NEA who've helped me to develop this presentation. So, I'm going to start by providing a really quick overview of the NEA's expert group on recovery management. I'll talk about some of our recent work and plans we have in place to produce a recovery framework,、um, which is centrally aimed at providing practical guidance on how to prepare for recovery. I'll then go into a bit more detail about the tasks of environmental remediation and radioactive waste management and briefly introduce an example of the preparedness work we are doing within the UK. I'll finish the session by providing a short summary of the key points for recovery preparedness and wrap up with a few specific takeaway considerations for the topical issues of remediation and waste management. So, the expert group on recovery management, or EGRM for short, was set up in 2018 as a subgroup of the NEA's Committee on Radiological Protection and Public Health. The EGRM's primary focus is to consider what more can be done to prepare for the recovery phase of radiological and nuclear emergencies and pull this together into a recovery framework which can then be adapted into national conditions. As part of this, the AGRM are currently exploring a range of cross cutting and topical issues associated with recovery, including a really in depth look at what is at stake if we fail to prepare and the main considerations for improving preparedness. These cross cutting and topical issues will form the basic structure of the recovery framework that we're developing. Um, a number of member states are represented on the EGRM, and we have gathered considerable experience of recovery management matters through literature reviews, national case studies, and events like the、uh, NRA NEA、um, co organized event that was held in Tokyo earlier this year. So, as previously mentioned, we've carried out a series of literature reviews related to the cross cutting and topical issues for recovery management.、Um, so, for example, we've reviewed a number of case studies, technical reports,、uh, national and international guidance, and the safety standards series.、Um, we summarised key points from each of these documents into a short template,、um, and we aim to collate all these、uh, template documents and offer them as a quick reference tool for users. Two of the topical issues that have been considered by the EGRM are environmental remediation and radioactive waste management. These two topical issues are directly related and should be considered together when developing any recovery arrangements. For example,、uh, some of the protective actions or remedial actions that are employed might generate little or no waste, such as tie down methods. Whereas other methods, such as the removal of topsoil,、um, may generate significant volumes of waste that will need to be managed appropriately. 
So looking at remediation specifically, um, we are basing this on the ICRP definition um, that remediation is essentially the process of reducing radiation exposure from contamination through um, protective actions or by breaking some of the exposure pathways. Any decision taken around remediation needs to be underpinned by the principles of justification and optimization, i.e. that um, remedial actions will do more good than harm and be applied in such a way that the benefits are maximised. With this in mind, there are many issues at stake um, for remediation, including both radiological and non-radiological health effects, as well as the wider impacts on the environment, economy or society. Increasing preparedness will help to ensure that we increase the optimization of any remedial actions at all times, taking into account the potential of the wider impacts or consequences of the actions that we take. Okay, so what needs to be developed in advance and where can the NEA's recovery framework add value in terms of environmental remediation? Um, some of the things we've been looking at includes things like producing proportionate and flexible scalable guidance that can be adapted to both nuclear and non-nuclear countries, um, producing a framework to deliver remediation um, and to aid decision making. So, for example, we might consider adopting the seven step iterative process for delivering remediation that was um, uh, developed by the NCRP in 2014 and then adopted uh, by the UK in 2015, uh, looking at clarifying organisational roles and responsibilities for remediation and how these might differ throughout the recovery process, um, providing information on how to collect and compile relevant data um, and information in advance. So, for example, uh, looking at population data, business data, um, critical infrastructure, waste, storage and disposal uh, information um, and then latterly uh, really reinforcing wherever possible uh, the importance of establishing a training and exercising program for recovery and looking to build remediation into that process. Okay, so a lot of work has been done already by the IEA on managing large volumes of radioactive waste in emergencies. And this is one of the very few aspects of recovery preparedness, which has its own safety requirement written into GSR part seven. There is also uh, an IEA tech doc um, on managing, managing radioactive waste in emergencies. Um, and this sets out the relevant definition for what constitutes waste, uh, what we mean by large volumes of waste, and also a broader overview of how waste generated in emergencies will differ from the waste that are generated during routine operations. Looking at what is at stake, um, there are a number of issues if countries fail to prepare for how they will manage radioactive waste in emergencies. The most significant is that countries will be unprepared for the differences between managing waste during routine operations and um, when comparing that to emergency scenarios. If countries do not uh, accept or act upon these potential differences, there will not be the appropriate policy, legislation and plans in place that will need to be referred to during the recovery effort. This will lead to decisions taken during the response and remediation phases which do not account for the consequences, consequence management repercussions linked to waste and a number of the wider impacts associated with this. So the EGRM are currently focusing on a few key areas that will help uh, member states and countries uh, prepare for managing waste in emergencies. So, for example, we are looking at uh, reinforcing the need for having appropriate policy and legislation in place, which explicitly references radioactive waste management in emergencies and is distinct from routine operations, uh, considering setting out in guidance the important link between remediation and waste management and providing a framework which accounts for this within, within the decision-making process. Uh, reviewing the internationally available modelling software, um, which can be used to predict the type and volume of waste that can be uh, generated during emergencies, uh, providing practical information 
around how to prepare for managing waste in emergencies. So for example, uh, taking a phased approach or and setting out roles and responsibilities, making the best, best use of the waste hierarchy and really trying to limit the amount of waste that goes to disposal. Um, and then looking at things like uh, establishing really early on in the recovery process and exit strategy for waste management. Um, also looking at feeding into the cross-cutting issue of recovery exercising and how waste management, the topical issue of waste management can be built into that. Uh, as an example of the preparedness work we're currently doing in the UK, uh, we have established a specific project under our Nuclear and Radiological Emergencies Recovery Working Group, which is aimed at uh, improving our arrangements for managing waste in emergencies. At this stage, we've identified four priority areas um, which we're looking into, and this includes uh, a new waste management handbook, which is part of the UK's recovery handbooks for radiation incidents, um, and this will cover things like the technical detail around uh, treatment options, storage uh, options, disposal options which need to be considered in emergency scenarios, um, looking at developing new national policy which explicitly um, supports the UK's position behind uh, managing radioactive waste in emergencies, um, a review of the UK legislation for radioactive waste management and how this could be applied in emergencies, and also a new UK plan for how we will practically manage uh, radioactive waste following emergencies. Um, the engagement we've had with the international community has been really helpful for these projects, um, and we plan to share the feedback and outputs from the project and share learning wherever possible. Okay, so in summary, uh, the NEA's expert group on recovery management are specifically focusing on the preparedness for recovery, and we are aiming to develop a framework that will help uh, other member states, other countries to improve their arrangements for preparedness. Um, we've conducted a thorough literature review um, and we are hoping to collate and present this information in a user-friendly format for others. Um, two of the topical issues we've been really concentrating on are environmental remediation and radioactive waste management. Um, and it's really important to remember that these two tasks should be considered in parallel when developing any recovery arrangements. Um, any decisions that are made need to consider the principles of justification and optimization um, and need to be considered holistically so that we factor in the potential for social, environmental um, and economic impacts within the decision making process. And then lastly, um, we are actively working on improving our arrangements for remediation and waste management in the UK. Um, and we are keen to share our experiences um, and continuously improve alongside the international community wherever possible. Thank you for your presentation. Uh, Christian, uh, presentation so this is a work done uh, in preparation for the uh, emergency situation and uh, based on our experience of Fukushima and also from the experience of Chernobyl, they have uh, taken various work and I have personally been involved in this work myself as well. And um, I'm looking forward to what they will be producing in the future. Last presentation is from that uh, Ohashi is a district leader of that, the location of the waste management sites. And uh, this was at uh, the issues regarding the construction of interim storage facility from the perspective of former residents. This is a recorded interview. Issues related to properties and related negotiation to set up that the storage site. This was uh, the site. This is a site, Futabamachi Township. 
Mr. Ohashi used to live in this house. Mr. Yorichi Ohashi, the former resident. I was born in this area in 1941. In this area, my ancestors moved here at the beginning of the Meiji and I'm the first generation here. And I grew up here and lived here and worked here and went to the office. When I was a child, I used to fish and trapped small animals for birds. And I used to run around the fields in mountains and play in the nature. That was my childhood. We were mostly put on farmers. And when I was in elementary and junior high school, there are no notable businesses operations and the residents work outside. Then later when the nuclear power plant was built, and most people started to work there in some ways or another and seasonal work ceased. That means that the people stopped going outside for looking for a job for my work. <laughs> After graduating from high school, the local high school here, my family was originally a small farm. So I had to take over the farmland as a successor, uh, but I did not go do the seasonal work. As someone offered me a job at the newly built ready mixed concrete plant. And when I used, used to work in 66 years until, and two years later, the Great East Japan earthquake and the nuclear power plant accident occurred two years later. Later means that after my retirement, I thought I was just going to evaluate it for the time being, but I have not been able to return to my hometown ever since then because I cannot live there. immediately after the accident in the year 2011. Everyone, I think most of the people in Futaba evacuated, but they thought they are going to be able to return home next day because everybody said that it was safe to us. It was already permeated in my, head, uh, in my head, evacuated to the mountainside in Hukaba of Taba, which is close on our back. Next day, we were told to move away from the plant at least 10 kilometers and then 30 kilometers. That was the evacuation order. The town hall has gone to Saitama Prefecture. But out of 7,000 people in Hukaba, only 1,500 went to Kazo, Saitama, with a town hall. The rest of the people didn't have any information at that time and had a very hard time evacuating and didn't know where to go, actually. There are the most people from Hutaba living in Iwaki, but the people who were renting the apartments and the house didn't know where they were living at that time. Tended to be isolated, so we, two or three of us, the head of the administrative districts visited them and set up the neighborhood council and tried to create the bond between these people. And I became the secretary of this neighborhood council. About 120 families have joined and we are done a lot of activities. Approved the interim storage facility. Tabatan approved. I was a head of administrative district, like the mayor, so the people with considerable authority in the ministry came to us. But I thought I couldn't say much for my personal point of view on this. I saw how the country or the prefecture or the city was doing. On the other hand, uh, there was a gathering in Kusoya, the district, and although it took some time to figure out where each person was evacuated to, but we are holding the meeting under the guise of the social gathering. At one point during the gathering, we talked about the interim storage. I offer this agenda item. At one, and I said that it's difficult to down each individual's property and assets offer that you have to decide for yourselves uh, what to do with your assets and property. I continue. 
So we won't be discussing it at the meeting. So please deal with it on your own. As a consequence, that the Hosoya district got through that conversation without any confusion. So there were those who sued to the state late and those who quickly agreed with the state. Some people are still opposed to this project in other areas, so it varies. Put up a town to become an interim storage facility construction zone. It is very disappointing, but in some ways that I thought it was a reasonable decision because that here we have a broken TEPCO nuclear power plant and it has become a terrible district in a way, in a sense. It's frustrating and disappointing to feel, but it is a reality. The scene has changed incredibly. Look at the collapsed building. Emotionally, it is a shame to see a vestige of the old days gone. I miss it. But from a different perspective, from the different angle, if the interim storage facilities are up and running, and the contaminants are being brought in, and Fukushima Prefecture, the rest of the area of the Fukushima Prefecture is being cleaned. The rumor, bad reputation won't have to spread anymore. So it is the benefit of this. I thought I'd try to be patient and concentrate more on the good points. A trace of the old days may be gone unrecognizable, but this is my hometown, it's still there. Whenever I choose to spend my final resting place, my hometown stays to be Hosuya, Futaba town, no matter how it changes. I will continue to think of it as my hometown. I won't have no other place to call home. I don't have a second hometown. That's why I want to keep this area in my eyes as it's changing. The shrine, for example, will remain. Our ancestor, ancestors moved here and worked tirelessly to create a rich land and they built the shrine in hopes for good harvest and crops. We want to tell people that the symbols we inherited from our ancestors are still there today. I want to tell the next generation that this is a process that we went through and how it became this way. I never condoned a nuclear accident. If I have lived here, I would be reasonably happy within it. But evacuation has led to so many encounters that go beyond that. And I can hardly remember any negative encounters with the other people. Good people, I mean. Amazing. I had encounters that made me wonder what the world could be like. Rather, I can say even mm, I'm happy. I'm sad to lose my home, to leave my hometown and to be gone forever. That's what I miss. But I never thought I would meet so many people and connect with so many places.
はい、大橋様、ありがとうございました。Thank you very much, Mr. Ohashi. Mr. Ohashi is in the public view in Iwaki. And there aren't too many people I,、uh, I heard there. But, however, thank you very much for your participation. That we are、uh, behind the schedule, but、uh, this concludes the present tour. And I would like to wrap up、oh, QA and wrap up that I would like to conduct here. I'm sorry. And for the QA and questioning and answerings, now,、uh, we originally said that、uh, we can do the question and answers. Uh, later on, but there are some、uh, answers coming、uh, to Mr. Kawase that cost effectiveness. And for this,、uh, what are that the issues of cost effectiveness? Thank you very much. That、uh, on, the, on the actual side, that they have not calculated the cost effective that the ratio that the environmental ministry is in charge of this. And also, that、uh, the results of that experiment was reflected to the local entities. Mr. Ogawa is not here, but now,、uh, how about the internal exposure of the operators? Or are you measuring that internal that exposure of the, the workers or、uh, workers engaged in, engage in the decontamination? Well, there are the related questions that I would like to pose all these to Mr. Ogawa and can get back、uh, that later. Mr. Osako. Uh, clearance that was 100 back letter. What is、uh, the,、um, the medical background for this? And 108,000, what are the medical that,、uh, the ground or the reasons behind?、Uh, Dr. Osako is、uh, the, out, of this,、uh, out of the forum, but I believe that he will come back to this. And 100 is,、uh, well, no、uh, restriction of that, the usage. And 8,000,、uh, there is a restriction of the、uh, usage.、Uh, Dr. Osaka, that uh, uh, 100,000 uh, becquerel or less a designated what, landfill, that what is、uh, the causal relations of this? And、uh, to Mr. Inoue, that、uh, the you know, national government and a、uh, typical are not trusted. So, what do you think about this opinion from your? Own position.、Oh, Mr. Inoue, yes,、uh, if you have the short, short answer to this, go ahead. Yeah, indeed.、Uh, my institute is uh, uh, this is uh, not the consortium and for the usage of the electricity and power. And through this,、uh, how to contribute to society, that is my institution.、Oh, the reason what I、um, said that the people do not trust. The national government and TEPCO, because that after the, the nuclear accident, I have been discussing the local citizens, and they are very mistrusting of the, the measures of decontamination. That they don't,、uh, nothing was going very,、uh, very well. And that's why that,、uh, the TEPCO says that、uh, you see that there is no, no worries of that, the accident and turn out the,、uh, exactly the others. And so,、um, so that's what I'm trying to say. Right after the accident, What I said, well, nobody thought that soon of the accident. So, putting our shoes into the Fukushima city, yes, indeed, that I can agree with them. As at the personal opinions, yes, that I wouldn't trust the national government and the EPCO. And there is a well, well, hung for it accident happened in the UK. And are there any reference, possible reference? Uh, we will forward this question to、uh, Mr. Mark later. And also,、uh, there are some questions to Mr. Ohashi. I'm sorry that I did not finish reading this. So, one minute to wrap up. That the waste and the soil for the disposal of this,、uh, and one thing is the technical terms, as I have mentioned, that the consensus building dialogue as a stakeholders, that the residents and local authority, government workers, the researchers have to exchange the opinions. Researchers are very important stakeholder. And for this, that how to communicate the good information and also that the consensus building and the dialogue, and I have to take into consideration of that each other's position. And also, not only one dialogue wouldn't solve any issues or that they reach the, the understanding. And therefore, not only communicating and understanding, so that it should be the two way dialogue. 
that many of the speakers emphasized on this, or that out of the prefecture, the final proposal, it is not only that a technical term that we have to really consider the dialogue consensus building of the national government and researchers, and also preparedness, among some said, the preparedness, and well, or that the accident may have, God forbid, and then we have to be prepared for this. And that Japan can contribute to this and that's be to the uh, responsibility of Japan. So uh, we have to take this into the consideration preparedness of that, um, that accident to take that um, uh, place in the future. Thank you very much for participating more than 100 people and my gratitude to the speakers and secretariat and uh, also that the simultaneous translators and those people in the audience pose a question. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. This concludes the session. Once again, thank you very much for your cooperation. The next session starts at 11 a.m.